Happy hump day, everyone. Hello out there. How are you? Is it, I'm, I'm opening up the today with a big yes. Let's get it right side up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. I say yes to hump day. I have to um, shout out to my loving friend, Janine, who um, she made some signs for me when I was first uh, uh, getting over the brain hemorrhage. And she painted some things for me to remind me to stay in as high a vibration as possible to help with the healing. And uh, uh, I, had a, I had several friends do interesting things uh, to support me in that. Uh, I had a girlfriend um, who is, you may know her here on Facebook as Arjan uh, Morelic. She is a gong avatar and she brought, her gongs are too big to bring a sneak, to sneak into ICU, but she did bring some of her healing bowls and she played um, healing bowls to uh, help reset some vibrations within me. She is known for having healed herself of cancer using sound therapy. So I very much believe in these um, not approved by the FDA uh, means for um, healing that are all around us ever present at all times. So I believe in a, um, a multifaceted kind of a multiverse approach to life and and healing on all levels. So uh, I was getting into my signs this morning. So hello, good morning again. Uh, welcome to this edition of the Hump Day Happy Chat, coming to you live from the Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self Mastery. And we're really uh, grateful for these times to just chat with you and say, here's how you do it, like life hacks. Um, from from the realm of who knows what like what the heck is going on here uh remembering even in the midst of that statement what the heck is going on here that my life is happening for me not to me and i am gifted multiple times a day gifted with opportunities to claim that to live that to be that to honor that and to do uh, what I love doing, which is believing and seeing, believing and seeing. So self-mastery is all about mastering you, the magnificent instrument that you are in your life so that you can exquisitely manage whatever your life brings your way. Um, even when you might look at that stuff and go, where does exquisite fall into this equation? <laughs> It's not necessarily the circumstance or the situation or the people. It's how you respond to the circumstance and the situation and the people. That's what it's all about. Like that's the dance. Like we, we somehow get into this belief system that it's all about all that stuff being beautiful. And when all that stuff is just beautiful, that my life is therefore appropriately named beautiful. Would that, would that it be that way? But nah, not so much. The real dance of our lives, the real dance of my life, the real dance of your life is how I be me and you be you in the midst of whatever that is, whatever the stuff is. Today I'm talking about, it's kind of a corollary to last week, which is what's up with the turbulence? Like the turbulence turbulence like oh have you ever been on a plane when it hits some crazy air and it starts rocking and bumping and a shaking and uh yeah and maybe you maybe you don't fly haven't flown it's that's not your experience of turbulence um maybe it's you're on a ple pleasant drive and all of a sudden you hit bumpy road and you know you're kind of bumping around or uh it's kind of not the same experience, but when you're driving in the mountains and there are switchbacks, like the, oh boy. And every time you, you're you just, and um, I used to get motion sickness, some really severe motion sickness. When I, when I was younger, 
like younger baby, baby young, toddler age, and even into my early teens, boy, oh boy, I had trouble. It was a big deal uh, for my family to figure out uh, what the mechanisms were going to be put into action to take the baby on a car trip. The, the hour and a half it took to get from our home in Arlington, Virginia to my grandmother's house in Baltimore, I might throw up at least once. And it would be, should she have a full stomach or an empty stomach and take Dramamine, which would knock me out. And whenever I went on, on big boats and oh my gosh, it was such a to-do. I had those pressure point things on my wrists and um, Dramamine. Then I found Bonine, which seemed to work better. And then I got a prescription and I had patches. I mean, I have done so many things to deal with the idea of turbulence, right? The turbulence in the world to try and keep my stomach down in the midst of that. And so when I think about turbulence, when I think about turbulence in my life today, like what, where is it coming from and, and what's going on? And when you when you look up the definition of turbulence, you will find violent or unsteady movement of air or water or of some fluid. So, okay, that's cool, or of my car. It also means conflict and confusion. Conflict and confusion. So there could be this violent, oh my gosh, oh my gosh which could be erupting in you at the sight or the experience of something out there. It erupts inside, right? And then it's because it's being triggered by something you're seeing or feeling or experiencing or hearing outside of you, that's going on. The turbulence of life is rocking and rolling, roiling you and you're not really sure why. And what do you do? Like in the midst of not knowing why, not knowing why, you still need to do something. It still feels like, okay, I can't, I can't survive this experience of the rocking and the rolling. It's not, it really doesn't feel like living happy to be me. It doesn't feel like that's what I'm supposed to be experiencing. And here's the important thing. When, when I'm in that stuff, I know it, it doesn't affect me the same way anymore. Well, what I, what's really true is um, after the, the hemorrhage, the stroke, like that went away. Like I don't get motion sick anymore, which is interesting, especially when I'm flying because there were very specific times. I had trouble on the ascension. I definitely had trouble on the descent. And then in the air, if things started happening. And here's what I remember very much the whole time I would just be wanting it to be over. I'd be in the space of when is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? Breathing, practicing my tools. When is this going to be over? Like I can do it. I can make it through. Everything's okay. I'd be talking myself off the ledge, which is absolutely perfect, beautiful, wonderful. I'm not going to make myself wrong for that. And what I also practice now is remembering that it's never been forever. Like a, the turbulence in my life has always come and gone. It's always gone. Sometimes much sooner than I thought. Have you ever like been bracing yourself for the next wave and then it never comes? Isn't that cool? That's, that's worth a yes. Yeah, baby. Bracing yourself for the next wave. Uh. Oh, <laughs> and then you look around and see if anyone saw you bracing. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Were they bracing too? So maybe they didn't see me. So bracing and then, oh, it never comes. I must've gotten on the other side of this. I must've made it to the other side. Wow, how cool is that? Now here's where it gets really interesting. When you apply that same momentary dissonance, momentary distress reaction into your life, the question comes up, what if I went through the trouble 
the turbulence in my life in peace and joy rather than fear and despair and guilt and shame and whatever else might be coming? Like, what if I did it in a space of absolute unequivocal confidence, aka faith, unequivocal, absolute confidence, I know it's not going to be forever because it never has. It's never been forever. Even if you say, well, Valerie, my life has been pretty hard. There are probably times in your life where there was some ease, peace, and grace and safety and elements that were even more fluid, more flowing than was the time of turbulence. And if there wasn't, if there hasn't been, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you um, analyze and diagnose that. I'd love to help you analyze and diagnose that. Your life is speaking to you no matter what. And so I want to help you. I'd love to be helping you get to the bottom of what your interpretation of those experiences is and, and help you see where the, the beauty can come out of whatever that is that you've been living. So what if this question, if I knew in the midst of any trouble, if my confidence immediately erupted, you know how uh, I drive a 2017 car and in, in a lot of um, cars these days, new cars, you get up to a certain speed and the doors automatically lock. Like that's, that's kind of cool the doors automatically lock. Um, I'd like them to lock sooner, actually. Sometimes I lock them as soon as I get in. But just lock, the doors just lock for you. It's like a safety feature to take care of you. So what if you invoked, designed, and distributed throughout your entire physical, emotional, spiritual system? What if you totally engaged in this utter truth that no trouble is forever. The minute you hit the trouble, the first thing that happens is this thing engages, this safety feature engages. No trouble is forever. As soon as you have the thought, what's up with this turbulence? Boom, no turbulence lasts forever. Okay, and that shifted you into a higher vibration and that made it easier, supported you to go through whatever this turbulence is in peace and joy and faith and love, confidence and courage, rather than in fear and despair, grasping on to whatever you can find and lamenting that your life sucks. I wish this were over. I wish this were over. Why is this happening to me? I don't know about you, but when I'm in that space and I'm railing against what is, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't make me happy and it doesn't feel good. I just feel like I'm just comment, I mean, just complaining. I don't feel empowered. I don't feel strong. I don't feel beautiful. I don't feel in my higher self. I feel toxic. And I feel like I'm exacerbating an already problematic situation by putting my own inner toxicity on top of it. And if I could just move that stuff out of the way, I could get on with it, get on with it. Let's get on with the business of being on with it. Let's get on with it. Where's the joy? Where's the peace? Where's the courage? While, right? So this whole question of what's up with this turbulence? The what's up with this turbulence? When I go through it, what's up with this turbulence? And I can claim, oh, and my doors have locked and I'm safe. And I'm growing my ability to ride out the turbulence like a surfer learning how to surf. I wish I knew how to surf. It looks so damn easy. And I know that means <laughs> probably not. <laughs> um, but it looks like so much joy out there. And that same joy can be in here in the midst of being knocked off your surfboard by a wave. 
in the midst of losing your footing because the water gets a little choppy and bumpy. In the midst of running out of a runway where you know what's coming next, so you're prepared and you know what's gonna happen and hitting the void, Ugh, how did I get here? Or hitting not void, but an actual roadblock. Bang, oh, I'm stopped. Like hitting that. If I, the periods where I go through turbulence in this inner peace, in this inner joy, in this inner happiness, in this inner faith, in this inner truth, knowing that what is the real essence of me is bigger than any little momentary turbulence, even if that momentary turbulence lasts for five years. How about that? What is in me, what I am, the truth of who I am is bigger than any momentary turbulence, no matter what it is, even if it lasts four years. And when I anchor in that spot, that's where the both and of living happy to be me is. That is, the, that is the space where I can realize, yeah, I can be happy even when I haven't figured this whole thing out. Even when I don't feel like I've summited my mountain. Even when I'm not all the way healed emotionally, physiologically. I can still anchor in the truth that that healing place is here for me now. So what happens when you do that? When you do that, you stand a higher vibration and that higher vibration that you are, that you are expressing, that you are like offloading, off gassing into your life, that higher expression has a ripple effect of gestation, a ripple effect during all that is happening in your life. That ripple effect is peace, love, joy, freedom. And what does that have to do through law of reflection, law of karma, law of attraction, hermetic principle, as above, so below, as within, so without. And the laws of science and metaphysics that govern the universe, that means your going has to get easier. That also means that as you're gestating into the next new period of ease and peace, that you are creating ease and peace as you're on your way there. So it's not about life has no challenges. Like there's never any turbulence. There are no bumps. There are no bruises. There aren't even some downright bottom, rock bottom moments. That's not what it's about. Living a happy life is not about getting rid of all the rock bottom moments. It's about how I go through them, how I experience them, how I express me in the midst of those moments, how I express the magnificence that I am, the brilliance of me, of the I amness in me, in the midst of those moments. That's the both and equation. That's the both and equation of those moments. That's the power and beauty, the true magnificent essence the capital m e in the title of my book living happy to be me living happy to be magnificent essence living happy to be essential nature of the divine living happy to know that i am magnificent essence and knowing that changes my whole world when i know that embody that and express it. So the question of what if, what's up with this turbulence is who cares about the turbulence? What's up with this turbulence? Oh, and the doors lock and I anchor into, I'm bigger than this. I'm magnificent essence. I'm living happy to be me. I'm putting the principles into the embodied expression of the I amness of me. That's where the bliss comes from. To me, the bliss is the acknowledgement that at the core, no matter what's going on, like seagrass anchoring in the ocean floor, no matter how turbulent the ocean gets, right? The seagrass is still moving. 
and anchoring in this essence that we are, the essence that I am, the I amness of you, the magnificent essence, anchoring in that in spite of the rocky, royally turbulence of our lives, we create the bliss for ourselves. Then it becomes unconditional, like the inner nature that you are, unconditional love. Then our lives become unconditional, the unconditional joy, meaning it's not dependent on circumstances hitting some high. And how do you do it? You choose it. You choose it over and 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 over. You catch yourself, notice, hey, I'm out of my center. And then you choose to go back there. It's okay to get knocked off a center. Happens to me. Still, it's okay. I don't make myself wrong anymore about that. I just notice and as quickly as I can make a new choice. Whoop, I'm off center, make a new choice. If I have to go back and do some cleaning up of whatever I said or did in the when I was off center, I go do that without judgment, with total self-love and respect. On your way to getting out of the turbulence, see the obstacles dissolving away. Speak it into truth. Speak where you want to be into truth, speak it into being. What we usually do is speak the turbulence. Oh, I'm having trouble with my family and my kids are doing this and I don't know how to do this COVID-19 thing anymore. I'm just really fed up, I'm, I can't stand it. We speak the turbulence. So through the same principles, hermetic principle, divine law, universal spiritual truth, you anchor yourself in the turbulence and then you wonder why the turbulence lasts so long. And you wonder why you see yourself doing things that don't serve you in the midst of the turbulence because you've become the turbulence. You've given over your power to the turbulence. You've totally lost yourself in the turbulence and you are at effect of the turbulence. So you've walked away from your divine superior nature to the turbulence. And that's okay. You just have to notice that you've done that. Whoopsie daisies, whoopsie daisy. Let me get back to what serves me. It's not good, it's not bad, it's not right or not wrong. There's no reason for judgment, guilt, blame or shame, self recrimination. There's no need for that. That's a waste of energy. It just doubles down on the yucky stuff. As soon as you notice, I'm out, whoops, I'm back in. I'm making a choice for who I want to be and how I want to be that in this moment. Transport yourself to having that which you want. Ease, peace, and grace. 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 Faith and trust, faith and trust, faith and trust, faith and trust. Ease, peace, and grace. Love, 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 love. Speak out what you want and it'll be yours faster than you think. Align with that in every cell of your being. The science in the world, the metaphysics, the quantum field, spirituality, they are one. Carl Sagan quotes, believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. Believe it first, to bring it into fruition. And believing it and speaking it out in faith brings it into fruition faster. Science is not only compatible with spirituality, says Sagan, it is a profound source of spirituality. Science and spirituality exist together. Join us <laughs> in the dance. Thank you for joining me. This is just a reminder. This is the last hump day happy chat that'll be just taking place on my Facebook page. They will now be going into my private Facebook community called the Bliss Collective. The um, URL, you can join request membership at facebook.com forward slash groups, the 
Bliss Collective. Three words, the Bliss Collective. And you'll know it's my group because you'll see my picture there. And it'll describe the group being connected to my book, Living Happy to Be Me, and my website, happytobeme.net. So come join us in the Bliss Connect Collective. Many blessings to you. I always close my hump day happy chat with the Karanaya Metta Sutra, the prayer of loving kindness from the Buddha. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings awaken to the light of their true nature, the truth of who they are. And may all beings be free. Emotional freedom. Here's my, yay, may all beings be free. This one was drawn by one of my students shouting out to Jessica Wong. Hi, Jessica. Freedom, may all beings be free. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Many blessings. Happy hump day. Hope to see you in the Bliss Collective so I can see you next week. Bye now.